I hope you can hear me because I'm not too sure. Yes, Master. Okay, you can hear. That's great. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, so we can uh, begin with a word of prayer. Uh, would anyone like to lead, please? Maybe someone who hasn't led in this uh, semester yet. I'll try. I'll try. Okay. I'll can try. Go ahead. Our dear Heavenly Father, I come before you, Father, thanking you for giving us the opportunity to come and learn in your presence, Father, in honor. You're such a wonderful God, Father. We thank you for who you are. You know, we commit all our students and our teachers, Pastor Maria, Pastor Nancy, into thy hands, Father Jehovah, and that you should bless her as she guides us to journey in this study, Father Jehovah. Thank you for your honor and glory, Father Jehovah. I also pray for all the fellow students who are in other platforms that are studying with us in this class. We commit and trust that everything is going to be well for us. I pray trusting in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Uh, this morning we had a question about knowing one's direction knowing um, you know how God would lead us in the in the ministry and things like that in mentoring us. So those of us who, have, who could not be a part of it, if you would like to uh, check it out, that would be nice. Uh, that is a question related to what we are we are discussing here regarding the prophetic. So uh, till now we have covered different aspects of the prophetic anointing. We've understood how it was seen in the Old Testament, how it was seen in the New Testament. And then we went ahead to see that the prophetic anointing is demonstrated in various ways. So one was the prophetic word, which uh, brings God's message to us. Then we also said that there can be prophetic intercession, prophetic uh, power, and the um, prophetic song that release the prophetic anointing. So the expression of the anointing can be in various ways. And we are trying to look at each of these more specifically and uh, understand you know, what we can gain. The last class, we touched on the prophetic word. Um, as the word comes, we've seen the, the basic impact that it makes, isn't it? We, we saw that the simple gift of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. And uh, the prophetic word is, is not just you know limited to that, but we saw how the prophetic word will release the prophetic power. The prophetic word can be spoken to rulers. It can transform nations. Uh, so the prophetic word will accomplish you know, what God has intended. Now, today, we are going to uh, consider the prophetic intercession. Uh, as the next expression, uh, you might feel that this is sort of overlapping with our first year subject, prayer and intercession, because over there, we talked about prophetic prayer as well. So uh, there can be a slight overlap, but uh, you know, please bear with me, those of you who have attended uh, that other class. So, prophetic intercession simply means praying as God leads us. Praying based on what we hear from God. So that is what prophetic prayer means. Now, we also know that the very first time somebody in the Bible was called a prophet, which is Abraham in Genesis 20, uh, God told Abimelech that you know, there is Abraham, he's a prophet, and he's going to pray for you, and uh, healing will come you know, upon you, uh, upon your women, and uh, cattle and flock, God is going to heal you because of the prayer of a prophet. So intercession, intercession is strongly associated, prayer is strongly associated with the prophetic anointing and the release of the prophetic can also come in the form of prophetic intercession. So Abraham was one who interceded for Abimelech and 
the healing came upon Abimelech. And we also see that you know, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was aware of what was going to happen. And so his intercession was based on you know, what he knew uh, from God. So he began to ask God, you know, if there are so many righteous men, will you still destroy? So intercession. He is intercession is talking to God on behalf of others. And that's what he was doing on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, because his nephew was there. That was his greatest concern. He started speaking to God and seeing whether he can negotiate in some way and protect the life of his nephew as well as the people who live there. So Abraham is our earliest reference with regard to prophetic intercession. We've seen that prophetic intercession uh, brings about different results. We've understood that it's about hearing from God and then you know, uh, praying that through. Now, prophetic intercession can delay or avert God's judgment. And prophetic intercession can foil the enemy's plans, Satan's attacks against people. Prophetic intercession can protect people. It can also release people's destiny in God. Now we are going to uh, look at each of these outcomes one by one. The first one being delaying or averting God's judgment. The example given here for us is from the ministry of Amos. Um, Amos was somebody that God you know, used as a prophet. Now, he would hear from God. God would communicate to him uh, visually. You, as you read the accounts of Amos, you would find that he saw this and he saw that. So God communicated to him uh, and told him that judgment would be poured upon uh, the children of Israel. The reason being, they ha their hearts had gone far away from God. So God had spoken to Amos that this is going to happen. And uh, uh, he showed him that there were two judgments that would come upon them. Uh, the first one, I think in the form of, in the prophetic communication, God showed him a swarm of locusts that went and destroyed the crop. So in that manner, God said that the people of Israel are going to face judgment. And the second way in which God showed him that uh, there's going to be judgment is through fire. You know, fire came and it began to destroy. Now, as Amos heard this, he could have been somebody who said, okay, I saw this wonderful uh, vision. Uh, God is using me mightily. And, uh, you know, that's about it. God is speaking to me. And stopped at that. Or he could have just taken this word and gone to others, letting them know that this is going to happen. However, what we see Amos do is he starts to intercede for the people. So when he knows that judgment will come upon the people, he starts to intercede. And we see God's response. God, uh, this all of this is in Amos chapter 7. So you could uh, go back and read it. By God listens to Amos' prayer and says, this also shall not be. So both what God showed him uh, in the vision, God tells him that such judgments are not going to happen to the people of Israel. So now this is uh, incredible because it's as if a sovereign God, you know, a God who um, has made up his mind about what needs to be done is actually relenting based on the prayers of a human being. So that gives us encouragement that even we can go before God in prayer and God uh, is a God who will hear us. So the kind of prayer that Amos was engaged in, in this uh, scenario, is a prophetic prayer because something was communicated to him already. And uh, he prayed through on the basis of that. So these prophetic prayers are very, very important. They are based on revelation. Okay? And this revelation, obviously, comes from the prophetic anointing. And 
one when one receives such revelation um it benefits it benefits god's people it benefits the body of christ um and you know we can pray very specifically into whatever it is you know, that that needs to get done so that is the uh, if you want to call it an advantage or that is the benefit you know of of prophetic uh, intercession so all of us can desire to be prophetic intercessors we can ask god god please begin to reveal to me now this prophetic intercession could be for ourselves it could be for our families you know when god tells us okay these are the things that are going to unfold or this is the direction in which i'm leading you we we know okay come on let's let's pray this through and uh, in the context of what we are dealing with now averting judgment if god were to reveal to us that okay you know so and um, uh, let, uh, let's say for a region that people here have their hearts have departed away from me and uh, uh, they are going to experience some calamities why don't you rise up and pray so we can become those intercessors and we know that our prayers will make the difference for the kingdom of god for the people of that region i know of several ministries where they engage you know a lot of people they all come together they seek god's face and as the lord reveals to them you know, about their state or their nation they pray they pray things through and uh, they see uh, god's hand upon their uh, uh, on the things that go on so prophetic intercession it averts god's judgment it is based on the revelation that we receive things that god chooses to disclose the purpose of his heart uh and the beautiful thing you know once again is that god listens to the prayers of his saints uh, and what a privilege isn't it that uh, god would relent when mortal man petitions him uh, and of course you know, we discussed this in our uh, prayer and intercession class that when we say god relents we don't mean that he will do anything contradictory to his nature but within the framework you know of uh, his nature what he has already spoken in his word within that in confirmation to his word he uh, can still uh, you know change judgments and and things like that so uh, prophetic intercession is very beneficial another uh, another place where we see this kind of intercession to remove <laughs> judgment is moses you remember the people of um, the children of israel were very rebellious uh the they were filled with unbelief they demonstrated their disobedience uh, time to time so moses was dealing with a very challenging crowd uh and at at certain points god himself got upset with these people and said that you know i am going to destroy them but moses stood as the intercessor and uh, he was the one who uh, requested the lord <laughs> excuse me interceded for any judgment to be removed from them so that is the first point here averting judgment yeah thank you so the second uh, thing that we see here with regard to prophetic intercession is uh, it foils satan's attack forms a protection over uh the people of god or it could be you know if even if the people are not believers when we are praying for our nation our state our prayers are going to protect the people from the attacks of satan so this is based on uh the verse from hosea 12 and verse 13 where we read by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet he was preserved preserved here is the term shamar okay 
the term shamar uh, the hebrew word which means to hedge or to guard or to protect so through a prophet there can be protection protection against what you know that here on the earth we um, have an adversary who's who's constantly looking to uh, you know hinder the people of god in whichever way possible he is ready he is he is actively uh, looking for opportunities so we have we need protection against anything that he does and here very specifically we see that protection how how was uh, israel preserved by a prophet so the understanding is that we can receive that shamar or that protection or that hedge through prophetic prayer prayed by a prophet or it could just be you know prophetic prayer it could be through a, a prophesying believer or something the prophetic ministry so what's happening you know once again very similar to averting judgment on the basis of revelation you know one is praying for protection and when that happens the schemes of the devil to whatever forms we know we've studied this as well there are all kinds of schemes there is deception accusation uh it could be some sort of a witchcraft uh there can be certain spirits of worldliness legalism you know various kinds of attacks that the enemy plans against individuals and communities of people all of this can be dismantled through prophetic prayer so we as god's people can act as watchmen the scriptures talk about intercessors being watchmen watchmen on the walls how are we watchmen we are protecting through the prayers that we pray and so you know, we must engage in praying for others a classic example is that of jesus you know when jesus in luke 22 uh, verses 31 and 32 he prayed for simon peter and uh, he said simon simon indeed satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren so when jesus discerned what is this prophetic isn't it nothing had actually happened to peter yet but jesus could discern it through the prophetic anointing that satan has a plot and he is going to work against uh, simon peter in such a way that his faith could be at risk he could be weakened in his faith and so how does jesus try to counter this he goes ahead and he prays he covers that's why sometimes we say this uh, phrase no cover please cover them with your prayer so cover is like your shamar the protection which uh, comes upon god's people because of the prayer based on one's discernment or revelation so prayers can protect people from satan's attacks prayers can also release one's destiny in god we saw earlier that john, uh, john the baptist he as soon as you know he he was born you find zacharias his father prophesying over him he he speaks uh, various things over his life and it's it's almost like you know like a prayer as well so in what he is saying what's happening is there is a release of that person's destiny what john is going to be like the things that john is going to engage in and uh, how god is going to accomplish his plans through john's life similarly today we can pray prophetic prayers over people's lives and over their destiny and as we do that things begin to line up in the spiritual realm uh, this could also have to do with uh, 
again, because I mentioned John and Zacharias, children. You could pray over your children based on the revelation that God has given you about them. And be very early on in their um, life, and very early on in your parenting, you recognize, okay, God is going to use uh, my child in, in these, these, these ways. That you know, God is going to uh, cause them to thrive in the marketplace, or God is going to call my child as uh, a worship leader or a worshiper in the house of God. So whatever it is that God puts on our hearts, you know, we can begin to pray. We can begin to um, intercede for that child. And as we do that, you know, the the prophetic anointing. Uh, is at work and we know that all this revelation is given to us so that we can invest in prayer and the, the life of that child is strengthened and things are set in motion. Things are set in motion uh, in that child's life. And we also have uh, uh, very many examples right, of mothers praying for their children. Uh, there are times when preachers have testified that they had nothing to do with God and they had gone very far away from God. But, you know, there were, there were mothers who knew that God had a destiny for this person to be in the ministry or you know, to, to teach God's word. And it, they discerned it. And even though the child was so far away from God, they interceded based on the revelation which they had received. And uh, we see how God set things in... in uh, motion for those individuals the right people came their way they spoke god's word or somebody prayed or some incident happened and you know god had a way of bringing back that individual uh, to their destiny so praying through on the basis of revelation can also release one's destiny in god so we must remember that so the prophetic anointing will also work in this manner now one quick thing, we will deal with this while we touch on the practical aspects of how do you prophesy, what should you say, how should you say it. Uh, but one point that I want to make right now is everything that God reveals is not for communication. Okay, By that what I mean is if I see something, if I see a dream or if I have a vision, um, or, you know, I, I get a picture and I recognize that this is what God is saying. That mean, that does not mean that I go and share it with anyone or a concerned person. It's not required till you are clear that it is supposed to be shared with someone. Instead, we could keep that in prayer. So, prophetic intercession is something that we can engage in when we receive revelation. So, when you receive revelation, begin to pray about it. If God doesn't tell us to share, then just keep it in prayer. So, maybe that's all uh, uh, God is requiring of us to just pray it through. So, prophetic intercession is a way of releasing the prophetic anointing. Now, we move to the next chapter here which is prophetic power. Uh, I'll pause for a moment very quickly. If you have any questions, we can discuss that and then continue with prophetic power. Anything with regard to prophetic intercession? Uh, yes, yes, Christopher, please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Pastor, no, this is just actually more of a, you know, a question around uh, Luke uh, 22, 31, uh, verses 31 to 32, uh, where, um, where Jesus talks about, um, uh, you know, praying for, for Simon Peter. And, um, um, I mean, he, he, he uh, mentions about it, uh, in, in verse 31, 32, and then subsequently after um, uh, Peter has, 
you know, said that he will, you know, give up his life uh, for Jesus, uh, you know, and go to prison. Uh, Jesus replies and tells him that, you know, uh, that he will um, deny Jesus three times. So um, just wanted to ask the question around, you know, while Jesus was, men I mean, Jesus mentioned that he, was, he had prayed for him, uh, that his faith should not fail. Uh, he also knew that, that uh, you know, that uh, the devil was going to, you know, um, plan to, you know, to uh, shake uh, Peter's faith. So just wanted to understand, uh, you know, how that prayer actually sort of, you know, uh, um, you know, actually uh, was made, uh, you know, you would, you would, given that, you know, Jesus knew that Peter was, go was going to uh, deny him. Yes. Yeah, Christopher, thank you. That's a, a really good question. Jesus told him that he, Jesus, Jesus told Simon Peter that Satan was going to test him, uh, attack him. But then, you know, Peter still failed, right? Uh, so your question is, though, though Jesus prayed, why is it that Peter fell? Is that your question? Uh, yes, uh, in in a, in a way that was yeah yeah that is a question uh, and uh, uh, I mean Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him, so um, in spite of that he prayed. So I just wanted to also understand you know I mean uh, sometimes when you know when we are praying um, we may have this uh, you know sometimes have this and we call call it doubt or we could you know feel that you know it's it's it may be something that's impossible so in the view of that uh given that you know jesus knew that he was going to deny him uh, why did he pray and uh, um yeah i mean in spite of knowing that you know peter was going to was going to deny him yeah christopher okay so uh christopher the way i understand this is Jesus prayed for Peter, which gave him that protection against Satan's attacks. Now, yes, Peter, in his action, he showed that his faith was not strong. Okay. But then I think overall his faith was preserved because we see the way things progress from then, isn't it? He denied. Now, now we know that that was wrong. However, his faith remained in Christ. And then, you know, he became one of those leaders of the early church. So what I'm thinking is, you know, in the overall picture, in the overall scheme of things, the prayer of Jesus strengthened and protected Peter. Now, had Jesus not prayed for Peter in that manner, maybe beyond the denying of Jesus, we don't know what are all the other ways in which he could have fallen and maybe even gone away from the faith. But since Jesus prayed, though there were those incidents, uh, I think in the overall, in the grand scheme of things, he was protected and led properly. And, and of course, also another aspect that uh, is at play here is Peter's own will. You see, again, this is amazing, right? Like Jesus prayed, but it was not a control. Jesus never uh, exercised any kind of a spiritual control uh, on Peter that he couldn't make his own decisions. No, there's always free will at play everywhere. But what one can do with prayer, Jesus did for Peter. And thankfully, you know, he aligned himself to uh, the plans of God. And overall, his faith didn't fail. And that's how I'm looking at it, Christopher. I hope somewhere I answered something. <laughs> so, no, I, I think uh, I think that that's a good insight. I mean, just something to add. Maybe okay, sure. Just another perspective to this is also that, you know, while Peter was... You know, he denied uh, Jesus the first time, second time, and the third time. Um, 
I think he 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 sort of did this in a in a very sort of human way in the sense that you know because he did it out of fear that you know he would get uh, uh, you know lynched by the mob or in the 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 people over there would actually you know uh, go and uh, you know uh, arrest him also. So uh, he did it out of fear and maybe at that time it was it was a very human sort of you know response and uh, he didn't feel he was actually uh, um, he had uh, you know uh, I wouldn't say I mean he, he knew he was denying Jesus but you know he wasn't really uh, he, I don't think he, he actually remembered what what he had told Jesus only when the you know when that when the cock crowed uh, that's when he actually remembered you know what what Jesus had said and that's where you know his conscience actually sort of you know really uh, uh, you know uh, came into play and um, that's when he you know he, he you know sort of hung his head and uh, you know cried uh, so i think that's where uh, you know it possibly it also occurs you know with us as human beings you know we we are caught in this uh, sometimes we sin we are sinning as as human beings and um, then we you know our conscience uh, you know, will 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 take over from there, and that's when we really realize, you know, the enormity of what we are doing uh, wrong. And um, uh, I mean, I, I guess in a in a in a in a sense, uh, if uh, you know, when the conscience actually goes out of play, or you know, it doesn't affect us, that's when I think you be in a we in a we in a situation where it's quite um, uh, you know dangerous uh, from a point of view of you know we are really sinning, and you know we are not. Not even feeling that you know we should feel bad about it, or you know our conscience should not even—it's it's not even over there. So just something to add here. Yeah. yeah, sure, Christopher. Thank you for sharing your insights as well. Um, so that's that's nice. Uh, what we'll do is we will take up other questions that have also come up. I know we're kind of digressing a little from our uh, key subject here, but that's okay. We'll quickly. Uh, answer the questions that have come up and then we will move on. Maggie, I saw your hand lifted up. Did you want to ask a question or? Uh, you, you, you answered, you answered the oh, question. Answered oh, okay. Okay, okay, great. You, yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, so Anita, I'll come to you because I saw Kennedy's question first. He asks, why did Jesus not pray for Judas Iscariot? Uh, okay, so Kennedy, we don't see Jesus selling another disciple uh, like Saint Peter, I have prayed for you. But that doesn't mean that Jesus did pray for his disciples. If you look at um, the passages in the book of John, you'd see that Jesus quite elaborately prayed. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for those who would receive him. You know, as, uh, those who would receive his sacrifice on the cross, those who would become believers. He, he prayed, you know, though all those passages from John chapter 14, 14, 15, 16, like as, as you begin to read all those passages before he was crucified, you would see that he prayed for everyone, which includes the disciples. So I'm sure he would have prayed for Judas Iscariot. But as I mentioned, free will is something that God will, you know, not try to... Uh, manipulate so yeah judas made his choice god would have known that in his foreknowledge but yet you know judas had a free choice and he did whatever he wanted to so i really hope that answers your question kennedy okay great yeah all right, thank you. Uh, yes, Anita, please go ahead. Uh, Pastor, I just wanted to make a comment where Christopher highlighted no, <clears throat> the Peter's uh, state of mind when uh, Jesus got arrested. <clears throat> There, are, it, this just this thing came to my mind, like uh, the way we are learning that prophecies are for edification, for our encouragement, and uh, as you spoke about the free will also, so maybe that uh, when the Jesus spoke, uh, told him this prophecy that uh, I miss, it is kind of a prayer, and at the same time the prophecy that uh, Satan is asking for you. But I have prayed for you, and you are not going to fail. Maybe that would have uh, reminded him when he was denying 
Jesus every time. No, the God has in, in, a, in like uh, instilled in me, and I'm not going to fail. And then he would have got back. Maybe that uh, just I could correlate with that what prophecy meant. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Anita. That's an interesting point because later on we see that. <laughs> Okay. Yes, ma'am. I, I I was. Uh, okay, sorry, Elisha. I I muted you because I thought it was by mistake that the sound was coming. Yeah, I can I can I just finish, Elisha? I'll just uh, add a point for Anita, and I don't mind you could unmute after that and share your thoughts. So what I was telling Anita is um, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, wage a good warfare with the words that were spoken over you. So if at all, Peter would have reminded himself of what Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. I don't know if the story would be different now. You know, if you would have had the strength to... Uh, uh, not deny Christ. So I just wanted to add that. Yes, Elisha, please go ahead. And uh, sorry for muting you there. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, madam. Um, uh, the, the thoughts I wanted, I want to share on Jesus praying for Peter is that uh, we all we all don't know the extent of failure uh, that Peter would have come to had Jesus not prayed for him. I, I believe that it was even the prayer that Jesus prayed for him that um, held Peter to his feet and he didn't fail. Though uh, he failed to a certain point, but I always ask myself, had Jesus not prayed for him, what would have been the extent of his failure? So I believe that uh, Jesus' prayer worked effectively in the life of Peter just as um, our the prophetic intercessory prayers could work in the life of people, though we, we will see some level of um, discouragement when we are praying for them, because we see that it is not working as we expect it to work. However, in God's architect, that prayer is really working in the life of that individual. So we shouldn't be discouraged when we don't see and clear resource, but I believe that it is working. Our prayers is working in the lives of people. Thank you very much. Yeah, great point there, Inesha. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's so encouraging that our prayers are working in people's lives and we must continue to pray for them. Even if they are seemingly failing. And in fact, uh, when we read the book of Hebrews, we see that for those who are wandering away, right, the Lord Jesus, he, he, is, he is the one who saves them from the uttermost and you know, intercessions that, that need to be made for especially those who are wandering away. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, prayers are very, very important and God, uh, God wants God wants us to pray for uh, people that they may not fail and they such prayers are effective. Okay, so good discussion there. Uh, and we can quickly touch the next chapter here, which is on prophetic power. Prophetic power is uh, another expression. Okay? So when the prophetic anointing is at work, either I say the word of God, and that does what God wants it to do, or I see something that God is revealing and I pray that to or there is prophetic power which is demonstrated. You know? uh, it could be after I, I say something or do something, or it could, you know, it could it could just happen, right? Because of the prophetic power is also something we we see demonstrated to the prophetic anointing. Now, in general, when you consider the ministry offices, you would find that there is a release of God's power uh, as per the requirement 
of each of those offices for an apostle god's power is released in, in a multifunctional way where the uh, apostle you know like uh, like uh, a forerunner is able to advance the kingdom of god find new frontiers for god's kingdom you know, do new things uh, establish many communities cause cause unity in the hearts of people for the kingdom of god release signs wonders miracles so based on that particular calling god's power is at work similarly all the other offices if you look at somebody in the office of an evangelist god's power is at work as required by that person so when they are preaching god's word and drawing the hearts of the people to uh, the cross and the lord jesus you would see that maybe you know that repentance happens healings take place miracles take place which are all leading people to christ and you know you see thousands one into the kingdom of god so god's power is always at work it works you know on the uh, basis of the ministry that people are engaged in and when we talk about the prophetic office similar demonstrations of god's power would be seen where god is mightily glorified by the things that happen the prophetic office is not the only position in which the prophetic power of god uh, is seen but it can be seen at various other um, uh, you know levels as well so in someone's prophetic ministry we could see that the prophetic anointing releases god's power in certain ways and uh, similarly you know when when someone is a prophesying believer there also we see the supernatural demonstrations but what does this power in general do we see some reference in the uh, incidents in scripture so we'll talk about that here but it doesn't mean that this power cannot work in any other way it can definitely work in many ways the first one is deliverance to captives so we recognize that prophet moses we don't call him a prophet but we clearly know that he was a prophet mightly used by god had revelation from god and moved uh, by god's leading and he was somebody who demonstrated the power of the prophetic anointing you know, do you recall the plagues and then you know you had uh, uh, moses go in front of pharaoh and do all those you know wonderful things with the rod and then leading the people out of egypt you know the parting of the red sea with the famous rod of moses so there were mighty miracles wrought through that rod of moses okay and what was the outcome deliverance god's people were delivered from the clutches of slavery so today as we see the demonstration of the prophetic power we can expect god will bring deliverance so today oppression uh, by demonic spirits uh, you know we see we see all kinds of activities of satan and his demons putting people in bondage addictions that people go through you know, various kinds of things so the use of the prophetic power can bring a release to all these things okay so it will set people free in other words that's what the prophetic anointing has uh, demonstrated in scripture and today we can continue to expect that people will be set free then prophetic power confronts the works of demons a classic example is the life of elijah where we see that he was um he had uh the prophets of baal okay, opposing him and uh, it was a very tough time you, if you recall you know, he had to he had to demonstrate that god is alive so on mount carmel he called down fire uh but god's power was very real and greater in the face of you know demonic powers trying to uh, show their grandeur so the prophetic anointing is such that it will confront and even overcome demonstrations from the demonic kingdom elijah is a good example again the example of moses in pharaoh's court is 
is is there for us to see so today if there are false doctrines you know witchcraft demonic assignments things that are going on we can expect the prophetic anointing to subdue those things okay and we can expect the prophetic anointing to confront and expose demonic activity so it's that powerful uh, and uh, we must trust god for things like that the prophetic power can cause unusual miracles once again all the prophets that we have uh, in in uh, scripture read, read their accounts one by one you have uh, elijah and elisha even if you were just to study their lives unusual miracles how did that happen supernatural events supernatural things took place all that through the prophetic anointing upon their lives some of them were even overriding natural laws okay so that was the greatness of the demonstration of the prophetic anointing and of course you know the prophetic power uh, is, is something that can impact leaders uh, national nations rulers uh, and things like that and again we see various prophets who did that you know, they had demonstrated god's power moses elijah elisha samuel uh, nathan all of these people you know daniel a lot of the supernatural was working through their life and it was influencing and impacting leaders of their times so this is the manner in which we have seen prophetic power being demonstrated so i'm just going to stop here and we will pick up from the next chapter which is the expression of the prophetic anointing through song so tomorrow we will do prophetic song uh, any questions with regard to prophetic power Yes, yes, Shri Kumar, please go ahead. Uh, Pastor, um, just, uh, I just want to know um, that um, when we when we speak about the prophetic power, so as a prophet or as a as the Lord leads him, and um, um, they, can we can we change the situations which which is which is standing against us? Um, can we cause you no know, like uh, you know cause a uh, like dead situation into a life situation when uh, when we speak uh, that's my question uh yes uh, shri kumar the answer would be yes you know dead situation into uh, something that is alive now if you look at incidents uh, in the ministry of elijah elisha they i'm i'm saying literal literally they raised people from the dead so the situation turned around now if you if you just translate that into the spiritual um, yes of course you know the uh, it can it can affect our atmosphere it can affect our circumstances uh, the prophetic power can you know release that kind of life thank you thank you first yeah yeah thank you shri kumar yes uh, okay we have uh, two more questions and actually we are kind of running out of time uh, but let's see if we can quickly accommodate kennedy says how do you sustain prophetic power uh pr sustaining prophetic power is dependent on our connectedness with god uh, kennedy so everything that applies to you know our relationship with god would come here so when we maintain the right relationship and i think the most important thing is submission the more we are submitted to god the greater the anointing on our lives and if that is to do with prophetic anointing then yes you know the prophetic anointing and the release of prophetic power okay so that would be my answer to you kennedy and i hope it's it's fine uh, anita quickly can you can you tell me your question Pastor, you mentioned about uh, that there are some prophecies which are not to be uh, not to be shared. Like, can you differentiate? Yeah, so we'll have to discern, uh, Anita. Not everything which is revealed to us 
is for us to go and tell somebody so you, again you need to pray and ask god when god gives you an impression to tell then you tell okay so i think i i will stop with that but we can uh, yeah yeah yes sir can we pick it up tomorrow anita because i yeah, think sure, sure, for the sure, next sure. class that's right okay we'll start with anita's question tomorrow all right so let's uh, pray and close i'll say a word of prayer heavenly father we thank you lord for this time in your presence in your word lord we pray that you will continue to give us a deeper understanding and a greater revelation and lord strengthen us lord strengthen us in our walk with you commit myself and uh, everyone lord in, in this class into your hands father god go before us lord even as we are uh, do different things throughout today in jesus name we pray amen okay okay class uh, take care bye for now god bless you and we will meet again tomorrow thank you pastor god bless thank you thank you pastor god bless thank you thank you thank you so much god bless you too bye